Ancient buildings and monuments certainly have their allure, but at times some of them go on to become icons. And the Strasbourg Cathedral is one such building. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to tell you about the Strasbourg Cathedral and how it came to be. But before that, go and subscribe to our channel to view more of our amazing videos. Oh, and click on the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. Now, let us begin. The Cathedral of Notre Dame de Strasbourg is regarded as one of Europe's most stunning Gothic churches. The cathedral was erected on the precise location of a Roman temple that formerly stood on a little hill above the area's swampy terrain. Bishop Werner von Habsburg proposed building the first iteration of the church in 1015, but a fire destroyed much of the original Romanesque structure. The Gothic architectural style had reached Alsace by the time the cathedral was being repaired at the end of the 12th century, this time using red stones brought from the neighbouring Vosges Mountains, and the future cathedral began to develop a full Gothic aesthetic. The proposal for Alsace's first cathedral was given to craftsmen and stonemasons who had previously built on Chartres' famed Gothic cathedral. The cathedral was first funded by the local prince bishop, but following his death, the municipal bourgeoisie took up the project. Due to a shortage of funds, residents also opted to contribute to the construction with individual donations. Erwin von Steinbach was chosen as the organizer of the entire operation in 1284. He intended to offer money for the church's construction, but because he was impoverished, he gave his horse instead. Von Steinbach envisioned and created the cathedral's spectacular west front and major entrance. By the time he died, construction had advanced significantly. The rose window, as well as his towers, were nearing completion. Ulrich von Enzingen, the architect of Olms Cathedral, oversaw the construction of the octagonal base of the spire in 1399, which was finished by Johannes Hultz of Köln after his death, and quickly became the icon of Strasbourg. The Strasbourg Cathedral was the tallest structure in the contemporary world for the following four centuries, thanks to the height of its 142-metre tower. It was also distinctive in that it was one of the few Gothic cathedrals to have only one tower. In 1521, the cathedral was converted to a Protestant church as part of the Protestant Reformation. The cathedral was returned to the Catholics after Strasbourg's absorption into France in 1681 and dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The tympana above the double doorway of the south transept depicts two scenes commonly used to honour her death and her coronation into heaven. The cathedral is a significant entry into Gothic architectural history. The facade of the Southern Crossbar is decorated with the remarkable Pillar of the Angels, added between 1230 and 1250. While preceding facades were almost likely designed before being built, Strasbourg features one of the oldest facades whose construction would be impossible without a drawing. The prophets, the wise and mad virgins, and the virtues and vices are shown in the church's sculptures, which date from the 13th to the 15th centuries, and are positioned above the triple gateway of the Gothic facade. Inside, there is a high Gothic-style baptistry built by Dotzinger in 1453, a splendid pulpit embellished with several statuettes sculpted by Hans Hammer in 1485, the Mount of Olives in the northern transept by Nicholas Roder in 1498, and the Middle Age St. Lawrence's Doorway. Many other treasures can be found in the cathedral. This includes more than 4,600 stained glass windows from the 12th, 13th, and 14th centuries that make up this magnificent collection. The roundness of the earth, sun, and moon are reflected in the Great Rose Window Masterwork, which represents God's gaze over his creations. These windows were historically used to help folks who couldn't read understand the Bible stories preached from the pulpit. Speaking of which, the pulpit of Our Lady of Strasbourg, carved out of white sandstone in 1486, is among the cathedral's most spectacular examples of Gothic architecture and fine sculpture. The north transept of the cathedral, which was completed in the 1500s, also has an early Renaissance style and contains the aforementioned beautiful, complex, and detailed baptismal font by Jost Dotzinger. For preservation purposes, the majority of the cathedral's original statues have been relocated to a local museum. Also worthy of note is the Strasbourg Cathedral organ, the presence of an organ has been documented since 1260. The original organ was added to in 1291 and 1327 before being rebuilt in 1489. The earliest parts of the current organ casing date from 1385. The bird's nest was constructed around about the same time. It's hung from the wall by a massive vertical oak beam that leads down to Samson's statue. 
Other sculptured sites here include the legendary Rorafa, or Weeping Monkey, and the City Herald standing either side of the organ, and the lion beneath it, all of which have moving parts. Now, the thing many visitors love the most is the Strasbourg Astronomical Clock. It was designed by a group of painters, sculptors, watchmakers, and mathematicians, and dates from 1842. It is not the first astronomical clock to decorate the cathedral. It replaced the original, built between 1352 and 1354, which ran until the beginning of the 16th century. The current clock has a perpetual calendar and planetary dial, as well as representations of the sun and moon's positions, including eclipses. The procession of Christ and the Apostles, which takes place every day at noon when the cock crows, is the highlight of the clock for tourists. According to legend, the guy who created the Strasbourg Cathedral clock was to be blinded, so that he could never build anything as incredible ever again. Hardly very Christian, and nobody knows for sure if this happened, but it makes for an interesting narrative. For around 750 years, the Pillar of Angels, a depiction of the Last Judgment, has stood in front of the clock. Within this pillar you'll see four evangelists that have symbols etched underneath them, and four angels blowing their horns to raise the dead to heaven above them. Three additional angels, and Christ on his celestial throne, are then above these angels. During the spring and fall equinoxes, one of the most fascinating sights within the cathedral occurs. A green beam of light travels from one window to the crucifix over the pulpit, where it lands on the head of Christ. The green hue originates from Judas's shoe in another window, which is only visible on a sunny day. Now, let's talk about the most striking feature of the cathedral. Yep, we're talking about the tower. Climb the spiral staircase for some breathtaking views of the Rhine and surrounding landscape. The ascent is difficult, since the stairs are narrow, uneven, and there are 330 of them. But the views over the Rhine Valley, the Black Forest, the Vosges, and the European Parliament are well worth it. The fact that Strasbourg Cathedral's South Tower was designed but never erected is one of the cathedral's most intriguing and mysterious characteristics. The famed solitary tower that was constructed was nearly demolished during the French Revolution due to anti-religious sentiments within the revolutionary ranks. To save the tower, a local locksmith devised a great plan to cover the tower with a massive metal Phrygian cap. Luckily, the revolutionaries lost interest and the tower was saved. The cathedral was damaged by bombings in the Franco-Prussian War during 1870 and again during World War II in 1944, but both times it was restored to its former glory. While I implore you to explore the innards of this magnificent old church, the best vistas of it are found around town. From the corner of Rue Mercier and Place de la Cathedral in Strasbourg, you can enjoy the best views of the cathedral. Other relevant sites include the Musée de la Oeuvre Notre Dame, which administers the cathedral's conservation and care, located across from the cathedral. The museum also has the cathedral's original artwork, sculptures, and tapestries, which have been replaced by replicas in the cathedral. The Palais Roi, which is near the cathedral, is regarded as one of the greatest specimens of French Baroque architecture and was formerly the residence of the bishops and cardinals of Strasbourg. Oh, and one last thing. Do try to visit Strasbourg during winters, as you'll be able to visit the famous Christmas market that is held around the cathedral every year. So, that's about all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.